Hey folks, I'm Dieter Melhorn. Is bluegill the ultimate catfish bait? Well, come along with me on this fishing trip and I'll show you how it performs. All right, guys, let you know what I'm doing here today. I'm uh, gonna go out and try to catch some catfish, but first I gotta catch some bait. So I'm rolling back here into a cove. Uh, gonna try to put some monstrous worms to work that my son caught underneath the uh, dog's water bowl outside and uh, see if I can get some bluegill on the boat. Don't have any boat, ain't been out here in about a week. And uh, so first things first, gotta catch some bait. All right, guys, let's go up here and get this bait out of here. These are some red worms that my son caught. We put them in one of our little red worm containers. Look at the size of them things. Hopefully they're still alive. Uh-oh. They might have got too cold. They're not looking good. Uh-oh. We'll be in trouble. The red worms are doing fine, though. That's not good. I might not have should have put them things in the uh, refrigerator. Uh, they're kind of... I don't know if they're dead or just... No, they feel fine. These just may not do good in the cold. We'll see what happens when they get warmed up here. They're big and thick. They almost look like night crawlers, but I think they're just big, big worms. We're going to burn through them. That's for sure. See what happens. Something's going to eat them. I guarantee it. I don't guarantee too many things, but when it comes to a big old chunky worm and a bluegill, they're usually going to eat it. Boom. Got him. Like I said before, not all banks are created equal. Boom, little one, but we'll take him. We've got one to take it anyway. It's little, little fish. But y'all know me, I'll use him. I ain't picky. Got him. <laughs> Wouldn't you know it? A bass. A fry bass. Got him. Might just have to go to the old pull it away from him technique. He fall down. Another shining example of an excellent catfish bait. Got him. Finally one hit it good. Doing a little battle with the wind here. Better fish too. Better fish, much better fish. Bam, got him. Got him, get off the stump. Another one. Not a monster, but we'll take it. folks spent about 35 minutes uh, trying to catch some bluegill got some in the boat my big red worms was dead so I had to go to my other ones that were in there they're a little bit smaller but they caught some fish so I've got some bait I don't have a lot I'm gonna try putting out some uh, double hook rigs to try to catch some white perch while I'm trolling through here uh, basically not gonna be so much trolling as it is just gonna be wind drift and I'm gonna have a drift sock out uh, I've got a wind that is coming just looking at the direction here kind of out of the southwest and uh, it's just going to float with the wind. I'm going to start in a river channel, come up out of it, roll up onto a flat, and uh, just see what works, see where they're at. Uh, this lake has changed a lot over the past week uh, in that it was muddy as a dirt field uh, a week to 10 days ago, and now it's nice and clear. Still moving water, still current. And uh, yeah, just stuff changing, a lot going on. Normally we've got a uh, thermocline by now, we don't have it. So uh, we're going to see what happens. So the plan is to take this knife and fillet up some brim. I'm going to use some heads, going to use some fillets, and uh, see if we can put a fish in the boat. Boom, there's our first victim. What I like to do is fillet the sides off. These are small, and that's okay. Boom, three good pieces. I generally don't use that. Some people do. I don't. Give me one more victim here. It's another one. Good one. A little bigger bait. Man, it's just hard getting big bluegill this year for whatever reason. I'm not sure why. And what I'll do is this one's got some thin rod, it looks like. Not good. 
And then what I'll do, throw that out. I'll cut off a couple of these end pieces. I'll use these little chunklets from a white perch bait. Just a uh, good old standard Santee rig. You've seen me use it and talk about it before. Kind of downsized on hooks a little bit here. Running nothing big, really not running any big baits right now to be perfectly honest. Those out. Get a good spread. Just for ease of operation today, I'm actually not running any planer boards just to uh, smooth things out. This is uh, somewhat of a recon mission to figure out where the fish are. So I can up and move around a little bit quicker that way. Get a couple more in the water, six rods total. We'll be fishing. Boom, I think I got a perch on this rod, but I also think I got a fish on this other one. Let me get this in and out of the way. Double perches, that's a good thing. There's our bait. But I also got two rods going off right there. Yep, yep, look at that, look at that, look at that. Oh yeah, let me get these perch off here. I have to mark this spot because this could be where the magic is. Let's get this one that one coming in oh yeah that's a good fish dude that's a good fish that's a real good fish i may have two i don't know if he's into this other line that's a decent fish that is a decent fish he is in definitely in at least one line and i got perch punch a waypoint real quick the reason i do that i got those perch bites and that catfish about the same time, so they may be laid up around where those perch are. This is where the trolling motor comes in handy. This fish is big enough, it's got the boat going to that side. Let's see if we get around this. So that's where having a trolling motor comes in handy. You can actually correct the direction of your boat. God, that's a decent fish, guys. After all these spawning fish, this is the first time I've had anything that's got some weight to it. That does look like another fish there on that rod. Some people ask about the way I hold a reel. It's just what's comfortable for me. Uh, I feel like there's less torque on the thing going back and forth than there is up here. I just kind of palm it. And he's not super huge, but he's fighting. That's good. It's a pull. It's a good fish. We'll take that fish. That leader. Bam. Wow. It's a good heavy female right there. Pretty sure. Oh, yeah, female. <clears throat> Great fish, guys. Great fish. What's that one? Let's see what that one weighs. Easy. Easy. 13 pounds. Good belly full of food right there. Maybe eggs. Who knows? I'm trying to feel it. See if I feel any muscles or anything. That's a good looking fish. All right, let's get that one back alive. Okay, let's see what else we got on the rod. Has this got a fish? Or is it that one? Yep, there's a fish here. Boom. Boom. I'm not sure if that other rod's got one going. Another nice fish. I'm telling you, you ain't gonna win no tournament with 13 pound fish. But dang, they're fun to catch. Especially on these lighter action rods. I say lighter, they're not light. They're medium action. It's just, uh, makes it fun makes it fun i'm probably gonna have to bring my catch the fever striper rods out here to striper stealth rods because they'd be really fun on that weight rod matter of fact that might be the next video we'll see good fish i just have to remember that on those rods i've got lighter line i got 30 pound on here i can put the wood to them but those rods I got striper line on there some of the slime line and uh, 
the clear mono. Got me a little smarter with it. There he is. Another good fish. Oh, he's barely hooked. This one may not make it in the boat. Oh, come on, come on, give me a break. I had my chance, didn't I, when that mouth was open earlier. <clears throat> I already had my shot. That little four alt hook was in there, boy. That thing was in there good. Good fish, probably. Yep, 10 pounds. Got some mite barks from the spawning on there. Nice blue cat. They love bluegill. What you can do is one of these situations is kind of almost blowing me parallel to the bank. I can use my trolling motor and kind of skirt up the bank. Try to stay in the same depth range. Wind's not exactly ideal for it. If wind starts blowing, it's going to sweep us into the bank. But I'm going to try using trolling motor. Troll up through here, see if we can stay in this range where the fish are biting. And there goes one right there. I think I got a fish on. The magic. Oh, Mac Byron would call that catching them on the turn. Uh, you got to make that turn. He's notorious for trolling up in creeks and coves that are pretty tight, and he'll make a turn in the back of them. Basically, what happens is all your baits stop moving, and uh, you'll catch them. He uh, learned it as a striper fisherman, crappy fisherman that troll do it, and uh, sometimes it works with catfish. That might have been what happened right there. Right when I made the turn, his baits are not moving as fast, especially the inside baits. And uh, who knows? Sometimes that's all it takes. Another channel. Another one. On this catfish sumo rattle. Nice healthy channel. Good one, get it back alive. That catfish sumo rattle. How many we caught on that thing today? It's been a bunch of them. Is it the bait, the side of the boat? Who knows? Might be that color. Color the same as that bluegill. Could be, could be, could be. Just released that fish. Worked on getting my turn made a little bit more and boom, got slammed. Turned around to, I think, hit the clicker. And uh, I heard drag. It's a good fish. It's a good fish. This would not surprise me if I'm into a couple of lines here on this one. And this is right up close to the bank, too. I think that's where these fish are right now. A lot of people ask about that reel, that lose. Good reel. Good reel for the money. If you're looking for something that's a little more affordable, it's a good one to go with. pictures of her get her back alive this seemed like a good fish it was pulling line oh yeah it's a better fish much better fish we'll take that again 120 yards off the bank it is the pattern that is working today I'll try to slowly nurse this fish to the outside I think he's in that line. He's gonna be in at least one line. Punch me in a waypoint. Let's see if we can remedy this. I ain't sure how that happened. I ain't sure how that fish 
did that double loop around that rod. Sometimes stuff happens. You got a feeling this is gonna be a boga. This is hook now. He realizes he's at the boat. Go down. Look at him go down. Look at him go. Should I get the net? Should I get the net? Am I gonna wish I had the net here once I see it? No. Oh. Am I gonna wish I had the net? He's swimming quick though. The only bad thing is, boom, there he goes, take some line. It's a good fish, probably should have got the net. Try to drag, yeah, it drag's fine. I got time to get the net. I could get it. There's something about, oh God, I should have, he's way big. Got him. Got him. I'm using two hands on this one to get him in. There he is. Right. right there is my first 30 pounder in June in a long time. That's a good fish. There he is. Good fish. Now one thing I can say about bluegill is it does seem that there are certain times of the year when it performs better than others. Uh, I think summertime is the time to be using it. Uh, the fish are easier to catch is when they spawn. Uh, they have an extended spawning period, and I think that plays a part in their appeal. They pretty much spawn from May through about July. Uh, I think that has to do something with their appeal, and I think the fact that they are up near the bank spawning has to do with the catfish, uh, their feeding patterns and things that are going on, and I think that's one of the reasons it works so good. Well, folks, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing, and here are a couple of more videos that I think you're going to like.